Your trusty elephant carries a load of resources to the ever-growing tower. Trip after trip, brick after brick, the tower rises further and further into the air. This is Rise of Babel, which was designed by Ivan Alexiev and Elijah Morar and published by Bedouin Games, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy and we're here with Board Game Geek. Well, I've got my elephant loaded up, so let's get this game down to the table to go a little more in focus on Rise of Babel. In Rise of Babel, players will be playing out their action cards, loading up their elephants, and taking heaps of resources to the tower. Players want to be the ones contributing the most to the building of the tower and thus gaining the most influence which is points. On their turn, each player will have five cards in their hand and they will always play all five cards. When playing a card, the player will choose whether to do the main action in the white banner or the alternate action in the different colored banner, if there is one. Players all start with the same 10 starter cards, but throughout the game, you will be gaining more cards from the market. These cards will be stronger and will have different actions on them. Many of the actions will have you move your resources from your stalls to different places. Each player has a bag with their resource tiles in it. It. These resources you want to bring and place into the tower to score points at the end of the round. This action here states that you may place a resource from one of your stalls into your camp on the main board. This is where your trusty elephant is. Your elephant can hold one resource, but you may unlock extra carts to be able to transport more. This action allows you to move your elephant one space towards the tower. Once your elephant reaches the last space, you will place your resources on the various towers. There is the major tower in the center and then the minor towers to the right. You may place your resources anywhere, but you generally want to place them next to or nearby your other resources. We'll talk about what scores what once we reach the end of the round. When your elephant delivers the resources, they will then go back to your camp. Some actions allow you to to move resources to your warehouse and then this card allows you to place a resource directly from your warehouse into your tower. When you see this symbol, you will move the matching tablet resource token to the right. So for instance, if I moved a tar resource to my warehouse, I would move the tar tablet resource one space to the right. Moving these tablets unlocks better resource tiles and powerful one-time actions. On your cards, you may also have gold showing. Any gold on your cards must be spent this turn or else it will be lost. Gold is mostly used to buy market cards which you can do at any time on your turn. When you buy a new card, it will go directly to your discard pile. At the end of your turn, you will discard all the cards from your play area and then draw five new cards. If your draw deck is empty, shuffle your discard pile to make a new draw deck. Once all spaces on all towers are full, the round will end immediately and the towers will score. As stated earlier, you generally want to have your resources adjacent to each other. You will score wood resources if they're all in a horizontal line. For example, red would score six influence here. Stone scores for being in diagonals, brick scores for being in a vertical line, and tar scores for being adjacent to other tar tiles. Occasionally, players may be required to place out confusion tiles. During end of round scoring, players will lose one influence for each of their resources next to a confusion tile. If your influence ever reaches the top of the influence track, it will go back down to the bottom and you will move up one space on the lion track. The lion track just represents the 10 digit in your score, so green has 32 influence here. Once scoring is done, all resources are returned to the player's bags, new towers are placed out, and play continues. Once the third tower is built and scoring is completed, the players will then count up the scores on their market cards and the player with the most influence will win. Rise of Babel is all about keeping those resources moving. You need to have a steady stream of resources going to the towers. That's how you score the majority of your points. And you definitely want to upgrade your cart so you can carry more to the towers in every single trip. And if Rise of Babel seems like a game you'd enjoy, make sure to check it out and learn more. And until next time, I've been Nick Murphy, and we've been going in focus on Rise of Babel. Have a great day.